Would you believe me if I actually told you that uh, development was not even in base game EU4? Anybody who watched my like release video from, you know, a few months back would see development was added quite a bit later. Actually, I think it was like common sense added development. Uh, but this mod here actually overhauls development. And instead of spending mana on it, you get development points. Those development points increase monthly and you can use those to develop. Now, it seems to be a little broken here specifically, um, it's probably because I'm spectating actually. Yeah, it's because I was spectating. And you can see here, you actually need to spend said development points uh, on development. So what do you spend your mana on, you may ask? Well, my friends, you actually have some new buttons here that will allow you to uh, increase monthly development. You can basically spend monthly mana on various things. You can see these are your admin, these are your dip, and these are your mill. And likewise, the development edict has been overhauled and now gives local development points rather than actual, you know, development. So each province produces development rather than development cost. And so you can see each province here produces a set amount giving them up to 0.32 per month. There's also modifiers for the base as well as administrative technology. So by uh, unlocking new admin techs, you will get new versions or increased versions of development. I definitely think that this is a super interesting premise and a very interesting looking mod. And so today we're going to test it out. Of course, specifically, I'm most interested in seeing how it affects the development of various provinces throughout the world. Some of the most developed provinces are 31, 33 over here in Nanjing, which is kind of nuts. And then you can see like Byzantium is 20. I think Paris is like 23. Yeah, Bohemia has 22 over in Prague. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the numbers we're working with, the tw mid-20s in Europe, and then a couple of 30 provinces over here in China. But you know, there's only one way to find out how things go, and that is to turn it on up to speed 5 and unpause. And my understanding is that the AI will use said points to do development and all those things, so hopefully we're going to see the AI toggling on some of these other things. But uh, yeah, we'll see how things go with this. They may not use these buttons. You can actually see in decisions generally. It doesn't look like they do. So I'm not sure if they'll use the buttons, but I, uh, according to the workshop, they definitely do these buttons here. I tell you what, the stuff that they added with custom GUI, like support for modders, insane. Absolutely insane. We do use quite a bit of it in uh, post Phenom, but obviously, you know, <laughs> it's pretty surface level compared to some other stuff that you're seeing coming out nowadays, which is important and all because, you know, E4 is more than likely going to be announced that their sun setting this year I'm, I'm i'm predicting it right now q4 this year they're going to announce eu5 and they're going to say hey and we've got one more patch for eu4 i think it's going to be like a quality of life patch where they're going to fix up some small stuff that maybe people have been complaining about and more importantly in my opinion they're going to be adding mod modding support at least that's my take on the situation let me know what you guys think now i'm not sure exactly how the development points will uh you know how fast it will go we're up to 28 in florence 24 in paris 21 over here in london and obviously we're going to be checking this in from time to time. Still at 33 over here in Nanjing. Uh, I do feel like there's some development going on, but I actually don't know. Like these guys are gaining a crazy amount, six per month. It seems to go down once they reach a certain threshold of manpower. And you can see here, they could spend 106 development points to update Nanjing. Um, and it will have the same bonuses that a regular development does, I think. I assume that some stuff has been affected at least a little bit. But uh, yeah, according to the Steam Workshop, they will use the development points to develop. So hopefully they will. And letting 40 years go by, I definitely think that we're getting a lot more yellow on the map. It does seem that the AI is targeting the lower development provinces. Uh, most of these bigger ones, like Beijing and Nanjing, are the same. Uh, Roma has gone up. A little bit for example obviously with the with the ottomans conquering constantinople it's shot up to 38 but yeah i've been checking in and there's definitely quite a bit going on in terms of development ming is almost 1200 development france is almost 600 ottomans has shot well up over 800 uh, so I definitely think we're seeing quite a bit. I'm honestly just mostly excited to see kind of what the numbers look like at the end. Like there's already so much development over here in uh, in Italy. It's going to be it's going to be absolutely nuts, I think. Though interesting to think about that it doesn't cost mana, it costs points, which scales based on the number of provinces that you have. So that may be inherently balancing against, you know, the one province miner sitting there building up a fort and then deving it like 45 times you know it's kind of smart but yeah the most developed province in the world is constantinople nanjing uh venice is actually up to 32 beijing and then at cairo is at 30. That's all of the 30 dev provinces but i feel like that's probably more 30 dev provinces than you would normally have though i don't know i might just be completely making this up we've got quite a few in the like 25 plus as well 
So yeah, I guess we're just gonna have to kind of wait and see. Obviously you can hover over this. See, this one was dev 23 times, whereas Paris has only been dev a single time. Rome only twice. And that sort of information is gonna be really helpful for us. Of course, in the meantime, there is like stuff happening, like uh, Castile being full occupied by Aragon, um, England basically full annexing Ireland, um, Danish Russia over here with Muscovite Baltic, like there's there's quite a bit of conquest going on. Ottomans have already pushed all the way over here, which is just like insanity. And Timmy is just, they dead. 40 years in Japan is like actually almost united. Well, I mean, there's a lot less tags than there is in 1444. And sadly, Korea looks like they're getting uh, beaten up on by the hordes. Got some blobbing going on in India with Junpur being very big and scary. Uh, Bamanis and VJ, though it looks like Bamanis is actually winning this one. I think VJ has all this land in the beginning and they don't have it anymore. Mams have pushed all the way over into Arabia and they're just absolutely dominating over here. Probably going to be pretty good if they can get a, a nice defensive position. But you already know once the Ottoman Wrecking Ball comes in, they're going to get absolutely booped on the snoop. And here we go. We've got the Reformation going on with the center of Reformation down here, as well as over here in Denmark, and I believe one up here in Norway. So a nice spread. Hopefully we're gonna see that uh, moving around. We've got a couple of provinces, or one province over here that's already converted. And an interesting development, we've got a giant France allied to Hungary, who's got a personal union of Bohemia, who is loyal. So uh, yeah, big power block over here in um, Eastern Central Europe. But oh my gosh, how about those Ottomans? <laughs> Truly terrifying. Same with Aragon cutting Castile in uh, in half, looking looking sad. Morocco over here blobbing over all the way into Tunisia. Good on them. And England finishing up the Emerald Isle. And uh, for some reason, France decided to push into like Italy and Germany rather than reconquer France. Burgundy is independent, so there's really no reason for France to not go for them, but I don't know, man. Oh, that's why. It's because they're in the HRE. Yeah, France is not going to attack them because then they're going to have to fight the emperor. Uh, but I guess Nassau is the emperor, so that's really weird. And apparently Hungary wishes to join the empire, which is... um that's going to be a big bolster for them. So we've got two giant nations on the periphery joining the, the empire. That's, uh, that's actually really cool. Can't say I think I've seen that before. I don't know. I assume that's not the mod. I assume that's a vanilla thing, but yeah. Pretty cool. Unlike Muscovy, who's getting the squeeze from Danish Russia and the Ottomans. Mm, probably not going to see a Russia if I had to guess. But the AI always amazes me. Um, so maybe we will. Oh, and shout out Catholic Ducal Prussia. Always appreciate that. Catholic. Over in the steppes, Chagatai ate Oirat, as did Ming, who's uh, doing quite well. If you can believe that. Bamanis continues to uh, munch away at VJ with Gudra seemingly uh, coming out as the major guy over here. But uh, John Poor has something to say about that, cutting them off in the north. Timmy is completely gone with Yazd existing. And uh, they are a Zoroastrian one province miner. So shout out that. I feel like you literally never see Zoroastrian nations in like a vanilla scenario. So I'm a big fan of that. But Hormuz and the Mamluks doing well. Ottomans seemingly not pushing too far into the south. Not yet, at least. And over in East Africa, we've got Kilwa dominating. And in West Africa, we've got Congo seemingly looking to maybe unite a little bit with a Sub-Saharan Africa, still very messy. Of course, with the Reformation underway, colonization is also underway. We've got uh, Brazil, which is a Portuguese, and the English over here on uh, whatever this island is, the Dominican Republic place. I always forget the names of these islands and people always comment, and then I just immediately forget. So I, I'm sorry, guys. Portuguese are also in Bermuda, uh, but not up here. This is Norway in Newfoundland. So that's pretty cool. We've got a Vinland. And as far as dev goes, we are 100% seeing like a pretty even distribution. There is so much less orange and red than there was before, just a lot more yellow, uh, which is really cool to see the AI like smart developing, at least my assumption is. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Venice has actually passed Constantinople for the most development in the world. Augsburg is in the 30 point club. Uh, and I believe that uh, Canton has also joined. So we are seeing quite a bit more. Prague, London, those guys were not 30 before. I think we only had about five 30 dev provinces before. So we're definitely growing. And uh, the 25 point club has also expanded quite a bit. So yeah, we're seeing quite a bit going on. A lot of these are small guys over in Europe, but uh, not all of them. Ayutthaya looking really good, John Poor. So that's pretty cool to see. Obviously, we're gonna have to let some more time go by to see how things go. We'll check the Great Powers list on the next time. The Reformation ravages Central Europe, mostly up in the north, uh, northern Germany, and southern Germany is reformed a bit, though it's not too bad. Uh, but it's past Admin Tech 10, meaning we've got lots of formables. We've got Great Britain, Commonwealth. That's pretty cool. Netherlands is on the map, and uh, whew, 
Iberia is very, very messy. Morocco got in on it and uh, Aragon took the rest with Portugal, three provinces over here, Castile, three provinces up here. And, uh, you know, the English are in the Basque country, but they were there before as well. Bohemia, still a subject of Hungary and uh, allied to France. And the Ottomans seem to have taken some land from uh, what has become Egypt for two videos in a row. I've seen the Mamluks form Egypt. We do have a Persia that formed, but uh, it ain't looking so good. <laughs> And seemingly the Ming are just running a rampage over here in uh, Eastern Asia. Kind of like Bamanis is uh, running a rampage over here in Southern Asia. <laughs> Ashikaga has decided to choose violence and united Japan militarily. Uh, and they've got a couple of small little breakaway guys. So I think they'll spawn via event. I'm almost positive. The British have made it to the Cape of Good Hope, as well as Argentina and Peru. Portugal continues to work on Brazil with France over here in Venezuela. <laughs> Apparently the British West Indies, but they're also over in Mexico. Denmark has joined Norway, colonizing the North. And the Great Powers list is definitely shaping up to look pretty cool with the Ottomans almost doubling their dev since we last looked with the Commonwealth right behind them. Almost 1100, same with France and Great Britain. So the top three of the top four, very competitive. Hungary is actually not even that far behind them either. Aragon, a bit of a fall off. And then the Ming, 17. They had almost 12 last time we looked. Uh, once they embrace those institutions, they will actually be the number one great power. But you guys know, that the uh, Mandate of Heaven can be problematic. <laughs> but even the number eight great power, Egypt, formerly the Mamluks, the nation formerly known as the Mamluks, almost a thousand development in the number eight spot. Oh yeah, absolutism is right around the corner. And my friends, <laughs> there is a lot of 20 plus development provinces, basically every single one of them. The lower dev provinces, 12 is like slightly orange. So yeah, we are we're seeing a lot of development. Europe is almost exclusively yellow and green, meaning like their average development is like 17. Still quite a bit of, you know, nothingness over here. But take a look over in China. We've got 20, 25, 26, 30, 35. Like all of these provinces have just been like, they've been caught up to. They used to be bright green. Now they're like blending in. So there's a lot. Great Britain themselves has 1500, which is just nuts, allowing them to be the number one great power with their colonial stuff, which we'll take a look at here in a moment. The Ottomans, uh, I think they were 1600 last I looked. Now they're at 26. So yeah, they're growing. Commonwealth obviously is growing. France, I think they were all around a thousand, if I recall, or like 1200. So yeah, we are seeing some big numbers. Ming, over 22 now. Even Hungary uh, has over a thousand development on their own with their PU of uh, Bohemia, giving them that extra little boost. Morocco, the number seven great power, 1358 is insane. And Balmanis was 17. So these numbers are absolutely busted. Like just look at the manpower, a quarter of a million manpower. Aragon's got 150. France over here has 277. The Ottomans, oh my gosh, 373. So yeah, I think the numbers may be a little overtuned. Force limit of 464 for the Ottomans. I need a little bit of balance in my opinion. But yeah, Transoxiana cleaned up the lands over here. Uh, and then Ming is just uh, going ballistic because they are very strong. Even though there is United Japan over in Manchuria, I don't think the Ming is worried at all. And yeah, as I showed, Bamanis is like dominating India. They ate up all of Gujarat, all of VJ, and now they're chipping away at Jhanpur and Bengal looks like to be eating a little bit at uh, Jampur as well. But yeah, Bamanis is the Indian guy. We've got um, Brazilian Australia, apparently, which is strange because we still have a Portugal, but Brazil is independent and they're colonizing. No wonder Morocco's in the great powers list. They pushed down into Sub-Saharan Africa across the strait here, uh, taking lots of land. Congo doing really well. Also with uh, Kilwa pushing all the way up past Ethiopia into uh, Nubia. So shout out Kilwa. South America continues to fill in with British, Peru, and Argentina. Uh, the French are working their way through Colombia a bit. And then British Mexico has definitely had a bit of a boom as of late. Aragonese, East Florida. So keep an eye on Aragon with British Louisiana. And then uh, up north, Norwegian Canada and Vinland continue to uh, progress. Nobody over here on the West Coast just yet. And it does look like the Catholics had won the League War with... Um, Ludwig von uh, Nassau, still the emperor. He was the emperor, the, uh, Nassau was the emperor last time we looked as well. And uh, we have Hungary <laughs> as an elector, which is uh, uh, definitely didn't expect that. There was an incident for them to join and then they got elevated to elector. I mean, they are massive, so it's not a huge surprise, but <laughs> there you go. But yeah, of course, between the reformation and not owning like a ton of provinces, you're going to be having a bad time. So uh, yeah, the development continues to go up with Venice up to 60, which is um, insane. They've got 34 base production in Venice, 51 in Budapest, Augsburg 47. So I don't think we had any 40 plus dev provinces last time we looked. Now we've got a 60, a 50 and um, like 10 40s, give or take. 
Uh, and then the 30, you just got to keep scrolling and scrolling until you get to the last 30. So yeah, lots of development all the way down to the very bottom. There is, um, it's 30 still. What province do you guys think will be the most developed in the world at the end? And, uh, how much development do you think it'll have? Give or take 10. Closest answer, we'll get a cookie. Well, there's a lot of green going on now. And, uh, yeah, as you'll see, we've got... <laughs> Lots of 30 plus development provinces, which is just absolutely bonkers for 1700. Absolutism is ending. We are, are just a few months away from uh, revolutions. And uh, yeah, there's there seems to be no sign of slowing down with uh, Bidar over in the Dakon at 87 development, which is absolutely nuts. Budapest is 75, Venice at 73, which is low. I think it was over 80 last I looked. So I'm not sure if they got uh, their capital raided or something. Not sure exactly. Warsaw, 66. Sokondiz over in uh, Ayutthaya is 63. We have three 63 dev provinces actually. Nine provinces with over 60 dev. And take a look at these 50 dev provinces. It just keeps going. Look at that. That's insanity. Look at the manpower. Ming has almost a million max manpower. That is, that's something. Great Britain with three quarters of a million. Commonwealth right behind them. Hungary right behind them. Dakon. France with over a half a million. And it's just like, they don't even have a whole lot of colonies. Some of these guys have no colonies. We're seemingly having some pretty high uh, incomes as well. Not enough to get economic hegemon, but uh, oof, that's pretty crazy. And the blobs are here and somehow Palpatine returned. We've got the Sardom of Russia with the Rurikovich and all that stuff. So I have no idea where they came from, but like a phoenix from the ashes, they rise the third Rome. Meanwhile, in the South, obviously the Ottomans have seen better days, probably some decadence, if I had to guess, with Georgia, Armenia, lots of nations popping out over here. And uh, the Ottomans losing a war right now to what looks to be Theodoro or, yeah, I'm not 100% sure on that. Oh, it's Dakon. Yikes. <laughs> All right, man. Meanwhile, Hungary has integrated their subject looking really good. We have an AI Italy, which I am a huge fan of. And the Netherlands just continues to blob down here into Germany, looking really good. Love that Great Britain still has Normandy and uh, Brittany. Um, and then Aragon has taken over the majority of the land over here, though it does look like Brazil ended up conquering Lisboa, but they're about to lose it to uh, Morocco, who's uh, very big. Transoxiana looking really good in Central Asia with, of course, Dakon forming from Bamanis over here, with uh, Ming doing a little bit of snaking, just a little bit, a tasteful amount of snaking, I'd say. And Ayutthaya looking really good, taking most of uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, that area over here. The Dutch and the Brazilians have conquered the majority of Australia. And South America continues to fill in with uh, Brazilian Peru over here, but the rest is about what it was before, except for the British up here in Colombia, Dutch, Mexico. And um, yeah, it's pretty ugly over here. It does look like the Norwegians popped free and uh, Canada is a Norwegian nation with Florida, a Dutch nation, I believe. And then, nope, not Dutch, it's actually Aragon. So we've got Florida, which is Aragonese in the uh, 13 colonies. Of course, things are filling in, but uh, the left coast is actually very French. So uh, there you go. That's definitely gonna be a little different from the way that California looks in our timeline. We got a pretty good idea of what the total development looks like on the actual ledger, but uh, how about that? Even though they only have 2,600, the Colonial Empire of Great Britain, 5,300 total development points, at least. Hungary, with no colonies, <laughs> number two, uh, very, very impressive. Commonwealth with over 3,000, France with over 3,000, Ming with almost 4,000. Once they embrace institution, they will be the number two great power. Uh, Dakon, over 3,000, and then a steep drop off to Aragon with under two, though probably gonna end with, you know, about three, if I had to guess. Morocco with 2.7 almost looking really good in the great powers list. Well, lands, uh, I let it go to the end and uh, <laughs> it got a lot worse. What did you have for the most developed province in the world and what was the value? I'm curious because uh, we're about to find out. We've got Budapest over here with 91, 91 friggin' development or perhaps Nanjing with 108. We've even got a 100 plus development province over here in India, but uh, the winner, <laughs> yeah. The winner, Moscow, 123 development. They don't have a whole lot of development, but they've got a lot specifically in their capital. Not even enough to put them in the great powers list, which has some wacky, wacky numbers. Great Britain only has 4,000 of their own and uh, over 9,000 in their subjects with Hungary, Austria, which has a really nice ring to it. Rounding out number two with 7,200 development of their own, 6,200 for France, 
57 for Dakon over in Inja. And then we've got a 5,600 for the Ming who made it through lads, followed by Morocco with 5,500, basically like half of Africa under one banner. And it's Morocco, which is hilarious. The Commonwealth with 53 and a half ish and almost 53 for Kilwa, who is the naval hegemon of the world alongside economic hegemon of the Commonwealth and military hegemon of Great written. I actually really think this mod is cool and I think it facilitates a really interesting mechanic. Uh, definitely needs some some balance. Definitely needs some balance. But like seeing the East Coast developed makes a lot of sense. In vanilla, this is usually still quite undeveloped. Besides from the uh, development numbers, we've got some pretty interesting looking borders, specifically Iberia looking pretty good. Shout out Navarra. They made their way back onto the map right next to uh, the British Basque country. Dutchies getting split up between France and Scandinavia, who united. We already saw Russia, but how about Ming? with their name up here, right across from Japan, whose borders have not changed for like 200 years. Honestly, a lot of the borders look pretty similar, except for Transoxiana blobbing really, really hard. But Dakon, I'm pretty sure they look about like this last time we checked. Same with Ayutthaya, maybe pushing a bit down into Sumatra, I think this island is, and over. Oh, this is actually Kilwa. This is Kilwa in Java. So yeah, shout out Bone, one of my favorite nations. And the Brazilian Australia is, uh, is it's still there. <laughs> They're losing a war right now, but they are still there. New World, it's all Brazil for the most part in South. Uh, they ate quite a bit of the British colonies. And up in the North, it's mostly British with Danish Louisiana, Vinland here from Scandinavia. And then uh, we've got American Northeast as well as the United States because these Aragonese, it's a Spanish speaking or Aragonese speaking uh, America, which is really funny. The rest of the colonies of the British are all still there with Dutch Mexico, and the Danish took a bit of the West Coast from the French. Religiously, it's mostly reformed over here. It, Italy is reformed as well as the Netherlands with Protestant, Scandinavia, Anglican, Great Britain, and the rest is all Catholic outside of, of course, the Orthodox lads over here. But how about Hungary, Austria with like 5% religious unity? Historically accurate. Shout out Ibadi surviving over here with Mazab. <laughs> Love to see a, a rare religion doing okay. And uh, yeah, it's a mess over here. Basically what you would come to expect though. With the Dakanis occupying the Catholics down under, yep, might see some uh, some uh, some Islam over here eventually. And culturally, the Poles expanded up into Pomerania, that's for sure. And the French pushed the Walloons and the Burgundians over here. Sad to see the Bretons not feeling so good with the Normans pushing them out of uh, this place over here in Brittany. Brazilian, <laughs> hanging out in Brazil with English making up the majority of the development or, you know, a good portion of it down here aside from Brazilian. And then American, believe it or not, actually taking up a lot of land in America, alongside the Mexicans on the East Coast, the Danes and the Norwegians. We've even got a couple of French and Quebecois over here in like Salt Lake City. China going strong, pushed through most of the reforms, almost every single one of them, which is absolutely insane. That development in their tributaries certainly helped. And of course, the uh, HRE losing one reform. They had two passed before. Um, yep, they have they never did anything, which you've come to expect at this point. Well, that was a good one. I actually really like that mod a lot and I would love to see some uh, tweaks to it, but. I feel like it would be really fun to have just like a vanilla plus version of the game, just a, a, a campaign to play for yourself. I'm going to have it linked in the description. I definitely recommend you to check it out if you haven't already. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like on it and subscribe. If you haven't already, there's a ton of content you're going to miss out on if you are not already subscribed. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I appreciate you making it all the way to the end. I'll see you in the next one.